Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today's topic is enamel. So enamel, as you all know, it is the hardest biological tissue. So this session is about uh, the beginning part of enamel. So we'll be covering the enamel under a few sessions. So let's see the details of uh, enamel and its structures. Enamel, it is an epithelially derived protective covering of variable thickness over the entire surface of crown. Okay, it is above the crown. Uh, so, hope you remember the stages of tooth development, the cap stage, bud stage, and uh, it starts from bud stage, then cap stage, and then bell stage so hope you remember all the stages because um, the enamelogenesis the ameloblast um, and its uh, conversion to enamel it's all interconnected so hope you remember all those um, concepts well and clear so let's start enamel it is a epithelial covering which is maybe uh, in variable thickness over the entire surface of crown and it is as I told it is the hardest biological tissue and it attains maximum thickness around 2 to 2.5 millimeter on the cusp of molars and premolars so at cuspal regions of molars and premolars it has a maximum thickness and the minimum thickness that is uh, near the neck of the tooth so this part neck of the tooth it has a thinnest uh, width that is uh, like a knife so knife edge around the neck of the tooth and maximum cuspal thickness is seen at the cusp of molars and premolars so let's see some of the physical properties the thickness i mentioned 2.5 mm thickness around the cusp of molars and premolars and 2 mm at the incisal edge and knife edge thickness at cervical region so thick at maxillary lingual surface of molars and mandibular buccal surfaces so colors it uh, depends on thickness and translucency of enamel it changes from grayish white to yellowish white so yellowish at thin areas with underlying enamel and grayish uh, at thick opaque enamel uh, hardness it is uh, 296 noob hardness number so as i mentioned it is the hardest biological tissue and peripheral regions are more harder and solubility it dissolves in acidic media that is why caries is happening because when sucrose is acting uh, sucrose is converted to lactic acid by the presence of bacteria there will be solubility of enamel it leads to cavitation which is known as dental caries regarding the permeability the enamel is selectively permeable uh, the route of passage occurs via road sheath enamel lamellae enamel tufts which are rich in organic content those things we will be dealing in uh, detail specific gravity is uh, around 2.8 and translucency it is semi translucent regarding the chemical properties that is it has the highest inorganic content in dental tissues coming regarding cementum and dentine it has highest inorganic content that is 96 percentage organic content is 4 percentage in the inorganic content it has basically the hydroxy appetite that is calcium phosphate and ions such as strontium magnesium lead fluoride and the organic portion basically the proteins such as amelogens amelogenins and non amelogenins 90 percentage of the total protein belong to amelogenin which is low molecular weight which is rich in proline histidine amino acids also glutamine and leucine whereas non amelogenins which is around only just 10 percentage which has high molecular weight proteins are ameloblastin uh, teftalin enamelin proteins and they have amino acids such as uh, glycine uh, serine aspartic acid 
so we have various structures to learn in enamel uh, these are very important because it is a short note questions sometimes this will be asked as long essay so we have various structures in enamel such as rods road sheath endoprismatic substance the striations are important direction of enamel rods are important hunter figure bands incremental lines of red cs surface structures of enamel enamel cuticle enamel lamellae enamel tufts dentino enamel junction or endoblast process and enamel spindles so these all can be asked as short notes so all are very very important so there might be uh, a question like hypocalcified structures so all are not hypocalcified structures some are hypocalcified structures because they are not properly mineralized okay so if not properly mineralized that become hypo and if it is over mineralized that becomes hyper so hypo means it is not up to the normality hyper means it is above the normality whatever it is hypoplasia uh, hyperplasia we know so it depends on the normal up to the normality so normally it is uh, reaching it is fine if it is not reaching its maturation its function its work then we call it as hypo and the remaining part will uh, give the idea of that sentence hypo calcified so the calcification is not proper it is less than normal so among these the hypo calcified structures are road sheath incremental line of red cs enamel lamellae enamel tufts enamel cracks enamel spindle and neonatal lines so these might be asked as a separate question what are the hypo calcified structures of enamel so that time you need to write all these structures not the entire structures so we'll start one by one first we have enamel rods which is cylindrical in shape it starts from dej to the towards the outer enamel surface so this blue line the second blue line inside is the dentino enamel junction okay so the pink uh, the brown uh, uh, lines are enamel and the pink lines are dentine so this is the dentino enamel junction so it starts from dentino enamel junction towards the outer surface so the number is 5 million uh, in left lateral incisor lower lateral incisor it is around 5 million and upper first smaller it is around 12 million in number that is enamel rods and its course is tortuous so it is tortuous starting from dj to outer surface it is not going in a straight line it is having a tortuous course so it starts from dj to outer surface of enamel and length uh, uh, regarding the length it is greater than the thickness of enamel because since it is a tortuous uh, course so it is not going straight line okay so if it is going straight line the length might be lesser since it is going tortuous so this is the thickness of enamel since it is in a tortuous way if we straighten this line it will be more than this total thickness okay so that is why i'm saying the thickness is greater than uh, sorry the length is uh, greater than the thickness of enamel so this is the thickness between two lines this is thickness so since it is a tortuous way if we straighten up this tortuous enamel this will be definitely greater than the thickness of enamel so the length is greater than thickness and diameter is 4 micrometer it increases from the dj to outer enamel surface by a ratio of 1 is to 2 so at dj it is 1 and outer enamel it is 2 that is diameter usually it is 4 micrometer at dj it is 1 means at outer surface it will be 8 okay so at dj if it is 2 outer surface it will be 4 so it appear as very clear crystalline nature in light microscopy we have uh, these roads shape as hexagonal okay so this is a basic picture of an enamel it will be hexagonal or fish scale appearance so in light microscopy this rods that is enamel rods appear as hexagonal shape so this is hexagonal that means hexa means six so six sides one two three four five six so basically this enamel rods are hexagonal in shape because it looks like uh, a asymmetrical with uh, asymmetrical structures with six 
sides okay so that is why it is hexagonal in shape whereas in cross section okay when we do cross section so cross section it looks like fish scale appearance okay fish scale appearance in cross section and in light microscopy it is hexagonal in shape then arcade outline pattern uh, near DJ and keyhole outline at enamel surface so enamel surface it looks like a keyhole appearance okay so all these are very very important keyhole appearance fish scale appearance hexagonal in shape arcade outline pattern so arcade outline pattern near dentino enamel junction okay so why it is important because of interwoven network of roads teeth can resist masticatory forces up to 20 to 30 pounds per tooth that is why it is clinically significant because of its interwoven network of roads so fish scale appearance it is not uh, very plainly arranged there is interwoven arrangement so it can resist up to 20 to 30 pounds of uh, force per tooth so don't forget fish scale appearance keyhole appearance hexagonal appearance and arcade outline near tentino enamel junction okay so this ultra structural or electromicroscopic uh, view gives the keyhole also known as paddle paddle shaped prisms which has 9 micrometer in length and 5 micrometer in breadth so we are talking about enamel rods okay so the first structure in enamel enamel rods so bodies of these rods always seen near the occlusal or incisal surface so occlusal or incisal surface the enamel rod bodies will be seen and the tails okay so the tails will be at the cervical area so if this is particularly a tooth okay so at this area occlusal surface there will be body of enamel rod and the cervical area there will be tail of enamel rod so that is about enamel rod now we have hydroxy apatite crystals so they are arranged parallel to the long axis of rod which has point 0 0.05 to 1 micrometer with 90 micrometer which has pyramidal shape and the hydroxy apatite crystals are uh, placed within this hexagonal shape so that is about uh, enamel rods and hydroxy apatite crystals now let's see about rod sheath so the next structure is rod sheath which is a thin peripheral layer which is more darker than the uh, enamel uh, rods and which is uh, less calcified more organic content so because of this reason it is more acid resistant than the enamel rods because it has less calcification or more organic content than the rods because the decalcification or acid is acting on the minerals so there will be demineralization so less calcification means less demineralization more calcification more demineralization since it has less mineral content than the roads the acid resistance will be more because there will be less calcification and uh, it is uh, basically incomplete uh, structure it looks like incomplete structure uh, in electron microscopic examination the next thing uh, we have interprismatic substance so interprismatic substance is the substance which is present between the enamel prisms so they are the cementing uh, enamel rods together the structures which cement enamel rods together which is more calcified than the road sheath okay so this is more calcified than the road sheath but less calcified than the roads and it appears to be minimum in human teeth so that is about interprismatic substance next we have striations striations enamel rods is built up of segments of uniform length about 4 micrometer 
okay and these are separated by dark lines that gives it a striated appearance so there will be a striated appearance due to the dark lines and they are more visible by the action of mild acids the appearance is because of the formation of enamel matrix in a rhythmic manner so always the deposition of minerals or enamel formation or the matrix formation in a rhythmic manner so it will be layer by layer it will be added so there will be presence of striations between these layers and they are more pronounced in hypocalcified areas okay and what are the directions of these roads so the directions of roads are different in different region so the next thing is direction of uh, roads so these roads are oriented at right angles to the dentinal surface so the inner blue line is the dentinal surface so always it starts at right angle to the dentinal surface in the cervical uh, and and central portion of the crown of deciduous teeth they are approximately horizontal so at the cervical portion and central portion it is almost horizontal direction whereas at the incisal edge and tip of the cusp they change gradually to an increasingly oblique direction so you can see the change of this roads to a oblique angle uh, until they are almost vertical in the region of edge or tip of the cusp so almost vertical okay almost vertical at incisal edge or cusp tip so it is horizontal at cervical and middle portion of deciduous teeth so in permanent teeth the arrangement of rods is similar to deciduous teeth in occlusal two third so occlusal two third it will be almost same in the cervical region what happens is uh, it deviates from horizontal to more apical direction so its cervical portion it is more apically inclined in the permanent teeth okay so the alternative clockwise and counterclockwise uh, deviation of roads from radial direction can be observed at all level so there will be clockwise and counterclockwise because it has both right and left side so clockwise and counterclockwise deviation will be there so in deciduous teeth as i mentioned the roads are horizontal in cervical and central part of the crown near the incisal edge or uh, cusp tip they gradually increase in oblique direction and almost vertical at incisal tip or cuspal region incisal tip or cuspal Uh, tip region and permanent teeth what happens is at the cervical portion the occlusal uh, tooth is almost same but in cervical region it deviates from horizontal to more apical direction okay so that is about the direction of roads now we have gnarled enamel it is also a uh, change in directional pattern because gnarled enamel is a very important short note so gnarled enamel is the near the dentin in the region of cusp or incisal edge what happens is this is incisal tip okay incisal tip or cusp tip so what happens is the bundles of roots seem to intertwine more irregular and especially in a uh, section which is cut obliquely so this optical appearance of enamel is called as gnarled enamel so you can see this is almost horizontal the pattern is more rhythmic and uh, regular fashion but at incisal edge or cusp tip this uh, roads what happens to the roads these bundles of roads which seem to intertwine intertwine more so intertwining of roads will be there at incisal edge or cusp tip so this particular intertwining of bundles of road that is known as small dynamal and this is a optical appearance at the incisal tip or cuspal edges so in addition the enamel rods they converge in outward course in pits and fissure occlusal surface of molars and premolars okay so in occlusal surface of molars and premolars what happens to these enamel rods they converge in outward course okay when it is going outward they converge next we have enamel spindle so enamel spindle is end of odontoblastic processes which is penetrating the enamel and 
passing the dentino enamel junction okay so odontoblastic processes which penetrates so odontoblastic processes from the dentinal side which penetrates enamel and dj okay which is known as enamel spindle okay that is enamel spindle okay so this all comes under directions of rods null enamel and enamel spindle now we have very important structure which is known as hunter sugar bands which is a very common question so that's about the uh, beginning part of enamel that is uh, we have covered the basic properties of enamel then the structures like rods rod sheath interprismatic substances and uh, variation in striations and variations in directions of rods so now we'll move to the uh, next part of enamel where we'll be dealing with the very important hunter sugar bands incremental lines of red cs and various surface structures such as perichaemata prismless structure enamel cups enamel brooches that comes under enamel rod ends neonatal line enamel uh, cuticle that is nasmith's membrane uh, then enamel spindle uh, so all this will be dealt in next session uh, as it is going very lengthy a video so we are stopping this session here till uh, directions of roads so we'll be coming with uh, these topics that is incremental lines of red cs under sugar bands and various surface structures in my next video thank you So this video is basically about the surface structures such as hunter sugar bands, incremental lines of red cs and various surface structures such as perichaemata, prismless enamel, nasmith membrane which is enamel cuticle, enamel lamellae, enamel tefts, dentino enamel junction, enamel spindle and enamel rod ends. So these are the structures which are seen in uh surface dj is another type which is the junction of dentine and enamel which is a scallop structure and enamel spindle and odontoblastic process okay so let's see the um, surface structures and dj in detail hunter sugar bands under sugar bands, it is a regular change in direction of roads responsible for the appearance of alternating dark and light strips of varying width. Okay, so there will be dark and light. This is not possible to show it here. So there will be black and white appearance. In when we take uh, sections of teeth, we can see the dark and light lines. So these uh, changes is due to the change in direction of enamel rods. Okay, so this alternating dark and light strips of varying width is known as under sugar bands. So this is most commonly seen in longitudinal ground section. Okay, so when we take longitudinal ground section, we can see under sugar bands. So they originate from DEJ. Okay, so they originate from DEJ and Mm, which pass outwards ending in some distance from outer enamel surface okay so it originates from dj and it end end from a uh, little distance from outer enamel surface so this could be due to there are many things it could be due to the change in calcification process calcification will not happen very regularly so sometimes the change in uh, will be rhythmic matter but in various frequency so that change in calcification process could be the reason for under sugar bands and uh, they may not be an optical phenomena but they are composed of alternate zones having slightly different permeability and different content of organic material nulled enamel is an optical 
optical appearance of intertwined bundles of rods at incisal cusp and uh, incisal edge and cuspal tip whereas the hunter sugar bands it is alternate white and dark bands or strips at various uh, width which could be which is uh, which is not an optical phenomena but they are composed of alternate zones having slightly different permeability so slight different permeability with different content of organic matter so that is why it is seen as uh, white and uh, white and black alternating bands so that is hunter trigger bands which is very important now we have incremental line of red cs next we have incremental lines of red cs so these are brownish bands which is seen in ground sections of enamel that illustrate successive apposition of layers of enamel during formation of the crown which are known as incremental lines of red cs it's nothing but we know in enamel mineralization will happen layer by layer the minerals will be deposited so this particular rhythmic pattern of apposition okay this uh, mineral deposition by layer by layer okay so in the crown section it is reflected in ground section as particular lines so these lines are nothing but indicative of mineralization rhythmic mineralization pattern so that is known as incremental lines of red seeds so hunter sugar bands is another type of uh, reflection and oblique uh, light that is also a, another pattern of optical uh, appearance that is white alternative white and black bands in oblique light when we take a longitudinal section so similarly incremental lines of red cs is also a brownish band and which is seen in ground sections of enamel which is indicative of mineral apposition okay so these longitudinal section which surround the tip of dentin from dj in cervical parts which run obliquely deviates to occlusal side so we can see at the tip of dentin uh, which surrounds the tip of dentin which surrounds the tip it is not easy to show in uh, uh, this type of board so so in transverse section so they appear as concentric circle it has been attributed to the periodic bending of enamel rods so it is due to the periodic bending of enamel roots and there will be physiologic calcification happening so why it is important because this broadening of incremental lines may reflect the metabolic disturbance at the time of matrix formation so if something happens so if it is broader then there will be uh, some disturbances happened uh, in matrix formation so my metabolic disturbances is causing this change so we can make out that something happened during the matrix formation okay so that is a importance of this incremental lines of red cs so that is about uh, incremental lines of red cs now we have surface structures various surface structures such as uh, enamel cuticle enamel lamellae enamel tufts uh, we have cracks rod and perichymata we have also perichymata perichymata also is a surface structure so we are going in detail about the surface structure so we have various surface structures the first one is prismless enamel okay so we have prismless enamel perichymata rod ends enamel cracks enamel cuticle enamel lamellae enamel tufts so let's see what is prismless enamel which is present in 70 percentage of permanent teeth and all deciduous teeth which found uh, least over the cusp tip and commonly in the cervical area which is least in cusp tip and commonly in cervical areas 
and which will not be visible and all the epithelial crystals are parallel to one another okay and they are perpendicular to stria of red cs so they are more mineralized than the bulk of enamel which is present beneath that okay so that is structureless or prismless enamel so that is about prismless enamel now we have perichymata perichymata uh, these are the transverse wave like grooves believed to be the external manifestation of stria of red cs okay so stria of red cs which is externally manifested as perichymata so there will be 30 perichymata per millimeter in the region of cemento enamel junction and their concentration gradually decreases near occlusal or incisal surface at 10 so here it will be 30 per mm and at the occlusal or incisal edge it will be 10 per mm so it is the external manifestation of incremental line of red cs or stria of red cs and enamel road ends okay so we have enamel road so we have another structure which is a surface structure which is enamel road ends okay so these are concave and very in depth they are shallow cervically and deep occlusally and pits of about 1 to 1.5 micrometer in diameter and small elevations which are known as enamel caps okay so we are talking about enamel road ends okay enamel road ends in enamel road ends if it is between mm, 10 to 15 micrometer which is known as enamel caps enamel caps and if it is very larger enamel elevations which is known as enamel broads enamel broads and enamel caps that is enamel road ends okay now we have enamel cracks they are actually outer edges of lamellae they originate from incisal edge and extend to varying distance in enamel in perpendicular direction towards dentino enamel junction so if any crack is present here it will be starts from here towards dj so mostly it will be 1 mm in length so these are known as enamel cracks neonatal line we have neonatal line in surface structure of enamel they are like deciduous teeth when they develop partly before and partly after birth so the boundary between these two portions in enamel is is marked by accentuated incremental lines of red cs which is known as neonatal line okay so neonatal line neonatal line is nothing but accentuated red cs line of red cs which is showing the demarcation of the portion which is formed before and after the birth so some teeth which partly develop before birth and after some portion after birth so these are uh, inter uh, it's are uh, the line which is differentiating these two are known as neonatal, neonatal line or ring so these results from abrupt change in the environment and nutrition of newborn in infants so prenatal enamel is better developed than postnatal uh, enamel and perichymata are absent in prenatal enamel okay so that was about enamel mm. Mm, neonatal line now we move on to enamel cuticle okay enamel cuticle they are delicate membrane uh, co covers the crown of newly erupted tooth which is known as nasmith's membrane is very important nasmith's membrane okay nasmith's membrane nasmith's membrane is nothing but covering of newly erupted tooth okay so 
So these Nasmith membrane are delicate membrane which covers the crown of newly erupted tooth or which is also known as primary enamel cuticle. Okay, so Nasmith membrane is enamel cuticle. This is secreted after the epithelial enamel organ retracts from the cervical region during tooth development. It protects the surface of enamel from resorptive activity of adjacent vascular tissue. So the primary enamel cuticle or Nasmith membranes job is to protect the tooth from adjacent resorptive activity. So we have primary enamel cuticle and secondary enamel cuticle. So primary enamel cuticle which covers the entire crown of newly erupted tooth which is removed by mastication which is secreted by post amyloblast. Whereas the secondary enamel cuticle which covers the cervical area of enamel thickness up to 10 micrometer which is continuous with uh, cementum which is uh, probably mesodermal origin and that is the difference between primary enamel cuticle and secondary enamel cuticle okay so these all are short notes enamel cuticle under sugar bands incremental lines of retius perichymata uh, enamel rods Nasmith membrane, enamel cuticle. Now we have um, enamel lamellae. These are leaf like structures. Enamel lamellae are leaf like structures, so it will be like leaf like structures that extends from enamel surface towards DJ. Okay, so this is external surface, so this is DJ. So it starts from here towards DJ. Okay and which is basically organic uh, and a little bit of mineral composition which originates in develop in planes of tension when road uh, the enamel rod cross such a plane they may not fully calcify okay so when tension is there there will not be proper calcification so that places uh, a crack may develop so this crack is filled either by surrounding cells if it has occurred in unerupted tooth or by organic material if it has occurred after eruption okay so the tension happens uh, when rod so during the such planes if tension is happening while eruption what happens they will not completely calcify and if the disturbance is very severe there will be a crack formation and if it is before the tooth eruption the crack is filled by surrounding cells and if it has occurred after then there will be organic content okay so that is known as enamel lamellae basically it has three types type a type b and type c type a is restricted to enamel okay so this is enamel this is enamel and this is dentine this is dentine this is enamel so this is dentine and enamel junction so type a is restricted to enamel so this will be here okay so it starts from outer enamel surface it will be here that is type a type b is may reach up to dentine okay so if it starts it may reach till here enamel lamellae and uh, it is mostly degenerating cells okay so type C is containing organic material and it may invade uh, it may cross this one tendino enamel junction that is type C so the significance is uh, it is a site of weakness in tooth and may form a road of entry of bacteria and initiate dental caries because it is poorly calcified there is no proper calcification happens here and the next structure is enamel tufts okay so enamel lamella if you finish enamel tuft is thin ribbon like structure which is resembling a tuft or grass it is similar to like similar to our enamel lamella so this is like tufts or grass which is created by examining such area under low magnification of ground section 
so we can observe it when we check it under low magnification in ground section so these consist of basically hypocalcified enamel rods and interprismatic substances so that is enamel tufts so they arise from dej okay so enamel lamellae which is erased from outer surface but this enamel tufts arise from dej okay enamel lamellae arise from outer surface enamel to towards dej so enamel tufts arise from dej and it reach up to one fifth to one third of its thickness and their presence and their development are consequences of an adaptation to spatial condition of enamel that is a adaptation uh, mechanism so it basically significance of enamel tufts is it prevents enamel fracture okay so next we have dentino enamel junction so this particular blue line is dentino enamel junction which is basically scalloped structure so surface of dentin at dentin enamel junction is pitted in shallow depression of dentin which fit rounded projection of enamel it appears scalloped due to the mixing of crystals of dentin and enamel each other so there will be mixing of enamel and dentin or crystal so it creates a scalloped structure okay that is dentin enamel junction so enamel spindles we have enamel spindles next enamel spindles are odontoblastic processes which pass across dj into enamel okay so their end is known as enamel spindles so sometimes odontoblastic process starts from dentin and it crosses the dj and reach up to enamel with a thickened end and they have been termed as enamel spindles so this direction of spindles and rods are divergent as rods are formed at right angle to ameloblast and spindles are parallel to ameloblast okay so enamel spindle is always parallel okay enamel spindle just parallel to ameloblast whereas uh, enamel rods are right angle to ameloblast okay so that is about enamel spindles so we have covered uh, the structure surface structures and other structures of enamel uh, this uh, so we are finishing our part 1 second part is amelogenesis the formation of enamel so we will be checking in detail already we know how enamel forms in our tooth uh, formation stages anyway let's uh, wind up the session 1 of enamel so we have learned about thickness color hardness solubility permeability translucency chemical properties various proteins and various structures so structures are rods rod sheath interprismatic substances uh, more about striations more about direction of rods and hunter sugar bands incremental lines of rhesus and various surface structures such as perichaemata prismless structure enamel cuticle enamel lamellae enamel tufts odontoblastic process and enamel spindle dentino enamel junction enamel cuticle which is also known as nasmith's membrane enamel rod ends enamel caps and enamel brush so all are various structures which is present in enamel so it can be asked as a short note a short essay and a long essay so it's a very very important uh, session so i'll come up with enamel Uh, formation or amelogenesis and my next video of enamel thank you so let's continue our sessions on enamel so in this session i'll be explaining about the amelogenesis the various layers of advanced bell stage where the actual enamel formation happens the process of amelogenesis life cycle of ameloblasts and mineralization and theories of mineralization 
so advanced spell stage we have seen uh, the bell stage in tooth formation so hope you remember this we have four distinct layers in advanced bell stage so we have butt stage calf stage and bell stage then advanced bell stage this is the last stage where the more four differentiation happens so in this stage we have four layers that means outer enamel epithelium stellate reticulum stratum intermedium and inner enamel epithelium which ultimately give rise to the enamel okay so let's see one by one how the enamel formation happens so in advanced bell stage so at advanced bell stage preceding the formation of our structures that is dentin and enamel the enamel organ consists of four distinct layers such as outer and inner enamel epithelium stellate and stratum intermedium okay so what is the role of outer enamel epithelium it consists of a single layer of cuboidal cells okay so at highest convexity this is the highest convexity this outer enamel epithelium becomes irregular in shape and the capillaries in the connective tissue which surrounds the epithelial enamel organ which proliferates and protrudes towards the enamel organ so immediately before enamel formation starts the capillaries enter into stellate reticulum so this increased vascularity ensures the rich metabolism when a plentiful supply of blood stream to the inner enamel epithelium is required so basically the outer enamel epithelium provides the blood network or the rich supply of blood for the inner enamel epithelium for the formation of amyloblast so during enamel formation the cells of outer enamel epithelium which develop villi cytoplasmic vesicles and large number of mitochondria all indicating specialization for active transport of material so all the materials required for the enamel formation will be transported from the outer enamel epithelium through the stellate reticulum via cytoplasmic vesicles mitochondria and villi which develops in the outer enamel epithelium during the process of enamel formation okay so what is the role of stellate reticulum stellate reticulum is middle part of enamel organ which consists of cells that are star shaped okay that is why it's got that peculiar name star shaped which has long processes reaching in all directions from the central body so it reaches from all directions from central body and these neighboring cells are separated by wide intracellular spaces so you can see wide intracellular spaces between the cells which has large amount of intracellular fluid okay and these cells connected by each other and to the cells of stratum intermedium and outer enamel epithelium by desmosomes okay the stratum in intermedium is here outer enamel epithelium is here so these cells connected with each other to the stratum intermedium and to the outer enamel epithelium by desmosomes so what are the functions of stellate reticulum so basically it act as a buffer against physical forces that might distort the developing dentino enamel junction giving rise to the morphology okay so it act as a resistance it act as a cushion and it it permits only limited flow of nutrition elements overlying the blood vessel to form it cells because when the first layer of dentin is laid down it collapses to bring the blood vessels near so when the dentin is formed this will be collapsed and bring the blood vessel near to the dentin which is formed just now whereas stratum intermedium which is a flat or cuboidal cells which is situated between stellate reticulum and outer enamel epithelium uh, it, the function is not fully understood but it is believed to play a role in production of enamel itself either by controlling the fluid diffusion into and out of amyloblast or by the actual contribution of necessary formative elements or enzymes so, so it has a significant role but it's not very clear what is its exact role that is stratum intermedium it is present between the stellate reticulum 
and outer enamel epithelium okay whereas the inner enamel epithelium which is derived from the basal layer of oral epithelium so before enamel formation begins these cells assume a columnar form and differentiate into ameloblast that produces enamel matrix so it will determine the crown pattern it induces differentiation of odontoblast okay so enamel induces differentiation of odontoblast from dental papillae so from dental papillae we have formation of dentin happen so this ameloblast induces uh, formation or differentiation of odontoblast from cells of dental papillae so enamel formation after differentiation into ameloblast and we have uh, cervical loop also so this part is known as cervical loop okay so this is a cervical loop so which is the border of wide basal opening of enamel organ where the inner and outer enamel epithelium uh, become approximated it will be become two layer cell so this is a crown when the crown has been formed the cells of this portion giving rise to a structure which is known as hardwick's epithelial root sheath okay hardwick epithelial root sheath which is very vital for root formation so which is known as cervical loop which is giving rise to hardwick epithelial root sheath so that is cervical loop and hardwick epithelial root sheath so this is how uh, enamel formation the basic step now let's see the life cycle of ameloblast one by one so according to the function of life span of the cells of inner enamel epithelium the life cycle of ameloblast which can be divided into six stages those are morphogenic stage organizing stage formative stage maturity stage protective stage and desmolytic stage okay and the morphogenic stage which is before the ameloblast are fully differentiated inter enamel epithelium interacts with adjacent mesenchymal cells determining the shape of dentin enamel junction and crown okay so during this stage cells are short columnar and large oval nuclei which fills almost entire body so morphogenetic stage morphogenic stage which is just before the ameloblasts are fully differentiated what happens this inner enamel epithelium it interacts with adjacent mesenchymal cells and adjacent mesenchymal cells and which differentiate the shape of dej and crown okay so in this stage golgi apparatus and centrioles are located in the proximal end of the cell and mitochondria are evenly dispersed throughout the cytoplasm so the changes happening in morphogenic and organizing stage okay so in organizing stage what happens the inner enamel epithelium becomes taller the reversal of functional polarity before that in morphogenic stage we have golgi apparatus and centrioles located at the proximal end and mitochondria is evenly distributed okay so let this be the nucleus so what happens in organizing stage the polarity will be changed okay that is the golgi apparatus and centrioles comes to the distal end and mitochondria to proximal end so these two will be at distal end and mitochondria will move to or segregate to the proximal end so this is a change happening in organizing stage okay so in morphogenic stage it was opposite and the reversal happening in organizing stage that is the golgi apparatus and centrioles move to the distal end and the evenly distributed mitochondria goes to the proximal end okay then the next change is disappearance of cell free zone so in morphogenic stage we have a cell free zone so that will be that will be disappeared okay that is morphogenic stage so what happens so in later or terminal stage odontoblast these are the odontoblast which begin to secrete dentin which is a critical phase in life cycle of inner enamel epithelium that differentiate into ameloblast okay 
so when odontoblasts begin to secrete dentin this orange one this is odontoblast towards the pulp or the dental papillae once the dentin formation starts this inner enamel epithelium differentiate into ameloblast so along with this ameloblast are cut off from their original source of nutrition that is connective tissue of dental papillae because this dentin is a hard structure which cut off the rich source of nutrients from dental papillae towards the inner enamel epithelium because it will act as a barrier okay between dental papillae and inner enamel epithelium so what happens it has to anyway get the nutrition so it was getting nutrition from dental papillae but now dentin is becoming a barrier because odontoblast is secreted dentin which is acting as a barrier so inner enamel epithelium which takes up nutrition from dental sac okay so that is a very critical phase hope you don't get confused this is dental papillae this is dental sac which is covering outside dental sac is covering outside not this one this is stellate reticulum so the covering outer dental sac will be providing nutrients once the dentin formation happen so there will be reduction and gradual disappearance of stellate reticulum thus minimizing the distance between capillaries so as the formation of dentin and enamel happens this distance will be reduced the stellate reticulum will be collapsed and providing the capillaries closer to the inner enamel epithelium okay so we finished two stages morphogenetic stage morphogenic stage and organizing stage hope you clear this the movement of this reversal of polarity of centrioles and golgi apparatus and mitochondria now we have formative stage that is secretory stage with and without tom's process so formative stage is also known as secretory stage where the first layer of dentin is necessary for the beginning of enamel matrix formation because odontoblast secretes dentin thereby enamel uh, inner enamel epithelium is converting into ameloblast okay so during the formation of enamel matrix earliest change is the development of blunt pro cell processes on ameloblast surfaces which penetrates the basal lamina and enter predentin which is known as tom's processes okay this is very important short note tom's processes tom's processes tom's process which is penetrating the basal lamina and predentin okay dentin is this yellow orange one and the closer to enamel is a predentin which is the first dentin which forms so during the formation of enamel matrix the first change is the development of a blunt process a blunt process on ameloblast surface okay which penetrate basal lamina and enter predentin so basal lamina which separates enamel and dentin which penetrates predentin which is known as tom's process so this happens in formative stage so in the beginning secretory stage where the first layer of dentin has formed so tom's process is not happen so as it goes as it grows the tom's process enters predentin okay that is a formative stage now we have maturity stage so enamel maturation occurs after the most of the thickness of enamel has been formed in occlusal and incisal edge so once the occlusal and incisal thickness of enamel is achieved then enamel starts maturing okay so during this phase ameloblasts are slightly decreased in length okay this is ameloblast which reduces its length and they display microvilli at distal end so the stratum intermedium cells lose their cuboidal cells cuboidal shape and regular arrangement and assume spindle shape so in enamel maturation ameloblast are involved in cyclic process in which organic material is removed and inorganic material is introduced 
and this process is reflected on morphology of cells okay so organic material will be removed and inorganic material will be placed that is a maturative stage and the protective stage so when enamel has completely developed and fully calcified the ameloblasts stop to be arranged in a well defined layer and can no longer be differentiated from cells of stratum intermedium and outer enamel epithelium this is stratum intermedium and this is outer enamel epithelium when the enamel has completely developed and calcified the ameloblast this is ameloblast ameloblast stop to be arranged in a well defined layer and it can no longer be differentiated from stratum intermedium and outer enamel epithelium so all will be looking a similar pattern so these cell layers form a stratified epithelium covering the enamel which is known as reduced enamel epithelium which is very very important so how the reduced enamel epithelium forms it is actually the outer enamel epithelium stellate uh, stellate reticulum and inner enamel epithelium okay so these three cells are very distinctive very clearly demarcated but what happens when the enamel has completely developed and calcified these ameloblasts they stop to be arranged in a well defined layer and it can no longer be differentiated from the cells of outer enamel epithelium and stratum intermedium so these three cell layers forms a stratum a stratified epithelium which covers the enamel which is known as reduced enamel epithelium okay so inner enamel epithelium further known as reduced enamel epithelium and the next stage is the desmolytic stage so the reduced enamel epithelium which proliferates and induces atrophy of the connective tissue separating it from the oral epithelium so that the fusion of two epithelium can occur so this is a completely formed tooth it erupts into the oral cavity so oral cavity there will be oral epithelium so in desmolytic stage what happens the reduced enamel epithelium proliferates and induces atrophy of the connective tissue there will be atrophy of connective tissue above the tooth okay so it can easily erupt into oral cavity so there will be fusion of oral epithelium and reduced enamel epithelium happens so reduced enamel epithelium has enzymes which can destroy the connective tissue fibers that is why it is known as desmolytic stage so this is how tooth erupts into the oral cavity finally the fusion of oral epithelium and reduced enamel epithelium happens okay so there will be morphogenic stage where the cell polarity matters and the organizing stage the reversal happens formative stage that is secretory uh, secretory stage where the toms process which enters predentine maturity stage where the tooth uh, where the enamel and dentin actually forms and protective stage where the inner enamel epithelium is known as reduced enamel epithelium and desmolytic stage finally it enters into oral cavity where the reduced enamel epithelium and oral epithelium which joins and there will be enzyme activity it destroys the connective tissue above the tooth and it erupts into the oral cavity so what is the function of reduced enamel epithelium okay so it is to protect the mature enamel from degeneration until the tooth erupts okay that is a basic function of reduced enamel epithelium now we move on to amelogenesis amelogenesis is on basis of ultra structure and composition there are two process happening that is matrix formation there is organic matrix formation and mineralization so organic matrix formation is ameloblasts begin their secretory activity when small amount of dentin has been laid down okay when small amount of dentin that is a predentin is formed the ameloblasts which is here okay begin their secretory activity so ameloblasts lose their projection that has penetrated basal lamina and islands of enamel matrix are dep deposited along the predentin so first dentin is formed predentin so the ameloblast starts forming enamel matrix along the predentin 
so as enamel deposition proceeds a thin continuous layer of enamel is formed all along the dentin this is known as dentino enamel membrane okay after that thom's process forms so as ameloblast begins to secrete enamel matrix they move away from dentinal surface so each cell forms a conical projection this projection is known as thom's process which enters into predentin so that is the role of thom's process so this thom's process contain uh, basically primary secretory granules and small vesicles whereas the cell body cytoplasm contains abundant synthetic organelles and distinction between this thom's process and cell body is clearly marked by the terminal bars which are localized condensation of cytoplasmic substances associated with cell membrane so that is how this enamel uh, forms now after that mineralization happens and maturation of um, enamel matrix so ameloblast which covers enamel or mature enamel are involved in cyclic process that is organi organic material is removed and enamel matrix will be introduced okay so there will be a ruffle border associated with inorganic material and smooth border border which is associated with removal of protein and water so mineralization has basically three theories booster theory seeding theory and matrix vesicle theory and mineralization of enamel takes place in basically two stages one is primary or partial mineralization second is maturation partial mineralization is around 25 to 30 percentage of total mineralization happens in this stage immediate partial mineralization occurs in matrix segment and interprismatic substances okay so we have two types of uh, mineralization that is partial and maturation okay partial mineralization only 25 to 30 percentage happens so whereas in uh, maturation it is characterized characterized by gradual completion of mineralization so this mineralization starts at heights of the crown and progresses cervically so it starts here and it progresses cervically however at each level maturation seems to be begin at dentinal end of rods so at each level it begins at the dentinal ends of rods thus in and this there is an integration of two process that is each rod matures from depth to surface okay it starts from here to outer surface and maturing rods is from the cusp or incisal edge towards the cervical line so it is happening in two directions that is from here to here and here to here okay one is from depth to the surface this is depth to the surface and this is from cusp or incisal edge towards the cervical line okay this is how maturation happens so that is about maturation and now we have few changes that is age changes we know what happens in enamel age changes most commonly attrition or wear uh, wearing of uh, enamel will be there and we have learned a lot of abnormalities which related to enamel formation that is mainly amelogenesis hutchison's teeth in congenital syphilis so these are the changes happens or uh, abnormalities during amelogenesis okay so that's all about enamel formation so we have completed in three parts okay this is actually part 3 part 3 so in first part we were ex explaining about uh, the basic characteristics and various structures present and the second part uh, we were seeing about uh, the hunter sugar bands um, incremental lines of dust seeds uh, perichaemata and all those things and the third part which is basically highlighting the formation of enamel based on the advanced bell stage structure that is four structures amelogenesis and the life cycle of ameloblast so you can expect a lots of questions 
amylogenesis, TOMS processes, uh, life cycle of ameloblast and reduced enamel epithelium and uh, the advanced bell stage, stellate reticulum, the dentin formation. So dentin formation will be dealt in detail in the next uh, session that is uh, dentin. Now we are finishing enamel. So enamel, to understand enamel, so I repeat, you need to go through the entire uh, chapter that is tooth formation chapter. If you have very good knowledge in tooth formation, this is very easy. So it is little bit confusing for dentin forms, then enamel forms before first dentin, the ameloblast induces dental papilla to lay down dentin, but dentin formation again in turn induces ameloblast uh, inner enamel epithelium to change ameloblast so that confusion is there to avoid confusion you need to start from the basics that is a tooth formation stages but stage cap stage and bell stage and regarding the root formation you need to know what is cervical loop hardwick's epithelial root sheath so you are if you are thorough with the basic topics the further topics will be very easy so i'll come up with dentin in my next session thank you